What's going on, everybody? We're here with Tony, and uh, we're going to get into some stuff. He's an amazing hip-hop artist, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Order up! So yeah, bro, I mean, like, how you been doing, man? I've been, been chilling, bro, working, tired. My back messed up. I just played in a 3v3 tournament the other day, so basketball. Hooping, you know, hooping. Yeah. Something like that. I lost in the yeah. first round, but it's cool. <laughs> cool, cool man. It was a good cause, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a Toys for Tots. Yeah, yeah. Game, so. That's fine, man. That's fine, man. And I know you've been, um, so like, yeah, you rap, bro. Like, yeah, you're doing stuff. You got any, like, uh, any new, uh, yeah, I got an album dropping. Well, I don't know if this is going to be out before, you know, after the album, but I got an album January 1st. It's called Addict. Um, very personal album. Um, I was talking about a lot of stuff that was going on with me this year, mentally, physically, emotionally, and stuff like that, so. Yeah, man. I mean, like, I, mean, like I said, we had we were just talking off camera. Yeah. Um, if y'all don't know, we know each other since like grade school, bro. Psh, elementary school. Elementary bro. Yeah. school. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's crazy, you know. And uh, last time I saw you was probably like what, like two, two years back, three two, years back, even longer uh, than that. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. So. Twenty eighteen. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I yeah I didn't even go to film school yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's crazy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, bro. And I mean, like, even you look different. Like, you look you yeah. look a lot better now. You, you know. Yeah. I, I um. Back in March, I started working out. I was uh, 330 pounds. I'm at 259 right now. Yeah, I had, a, I had to get right. So. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just tough, too, bro. <laughs> bro, tough. I cut off. I cut out pork. I cut out red meat completely. I don't eat red meat or pork no more. Um, I don't eat fried food no more. All I eat is turkey, chicken, fish, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, bro. That's what's up. That's dedication. That's how it works, bro. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're showing that type of discipline already there, then who yeah. knows what you can get to. Exactly. And yeah, you know it's hard with, you know, being Hispanic. Yeah. Where, yeah you bro. know what I mean? That's the biggest, <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest struggle, bro. So, Especially with pork, bro, because, like, I know you Puerto Rican. I'm Puerto Rican. But, yo, like, crazy. Thanksgiving, I couldn't even eat none of that, bro. Yeah, oh, my yeah, man. Yeah. And now like, Christmas comes yeah. out. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's tough, bro. Even myself, I'm like, damn, I shouldn't be eating this. It's bro. crazy because, like, now even if I try to eat it, I can't. It, like, last time I ate, try to eat uh, pork, I threw up. Yeah. My yeah. body just rejects it now. So, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. That's how I feel about soda. I cut off soda. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Once in a while, I'll try to take a sip, and I'm like, nope. You can't. Mm-hmm. You can't, yeah. yeah. I don't even like Malta, no, like Malta. Yeah, bro, I don't me like neither, Malta. bro. I, I, I never like Malta. You know, Not the it? only thing that I can't stop eating for some reason is them sweets, bro. Oh, uh, sweet. Them yeah. sweets is killing me, like, yeah. flan. Yeah, uh, cookies is my weakness. Yeah. So, yes. If sir. y'all ever want to take me out, y'all could you know feed me a cookie. Bro. Y'all can take me out. <laughs> What's your go-to shit, man? Well, my go-to uh, cookie. Yeah, your go- yeah. I'm not gonna lie, Snickerdoodles is Snickerdoodle. fire. Or fire. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, bro. I like Oreo, but you know they be staining the teeth. You gotta drink like a no. Yeah, bottle oh, no, of water Oreos right. is fire, but you know Oreos is too much chocolate. I'm not really a big chocolate person, so I got to get the golden Oreos. Ah, I feel you. Yeah. Bro. Like the vanilla joint. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> Fire. That's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man. So like let's you know, let's start off. Let's see how like you got to where you at right now almost. Cause like as long as I knew you, you were somewhat surrounded around music already. Yeah. You know, and, and uh and uh your father, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. DJ Tony Stark, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 My my dad's a DJ. My grandfather was in a salsa band too. Not a lot of people know that about me, but um my dad's a DJ. He's into Latin music. Uh, he DJs at like all the major clubs in Orlando, you know, like Beecham, Gill, stuff like that. And he also goes like out of out of state and sometimes. But my dad, like, you know, I grew up with reggaeton. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was where I really started. Then when I started school is when I started getting into hip hop. You know, when yeah. as a kid, everybody in my family spoke Spanish only, so I was only Spanish. Started school. All that went out the window. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, don't get me wrong, I still speak it, it's just not the best. Yeah, yeah. Not the best. But yeah, you know, my dad kind of got me into it, you know what I mean? Then I went to the studio. I remember I I went, I took Eric to the studio with me. That was our very first time going. Very first time ever going. And we went and we recorded a song and that shit came out fire. So I'm like, hey, I kept going from there and now I'm where I'm at right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually the first time I heard you guys too. I think it was Orlando Magic. Orlando Magic, yeah, yeah. Oh, no cat, no cat, no cat. I heard the song like way back when I did. Yeah, yeah. Because like for some reason though, like y'all like y'all dropped it and y'all mm-hmm. took it away and y'all yeah, dropped it again. Yeah. And um, 
And the only reason I know is because I was actually going out of my way to look for this song. Yeah, yeah. I heard it before, yeah. and I was like, yo, I kind of like it. I want to hear it again. Yeah. I couldn't find it. Yeah. Like, a year later, it like, dropped again. I'm like, wait, so it never dropped before? And I was a little bit confused there, but, you know, I'm not, you know. No, I could explain that. So, yeah. um, we had a we had this guy from Philly called Cashier Fresh on the original one. I'm not going to lie. We paid for the feature. You know, um, I don't know if y'all remember. Remember Vine? You remember yeah, Vine, yeah, right? Cool. You remember the guy, the kid, that uh, the Bach the Bit Bookie kid, yeah, the one with the glasses? Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Oh, so, okay, we have put okay, him on the yeah. song. And he promoted it and everything, but everybody that was listening to it didn't really like his verse. They kept saying, like, I'm going to be real, bro. Y'all should not have put him on the song. All this other stuff, like the verse is okay, but it wasn't all that. So yeah, I remember kid, bro. Yeah, yeah, like you know what I mean? So like me and Eric was like like a year later came out and we we're like, bro, let's just redrop it. A lot of people like that song, let's just redrop yeah. it. So we redropped it. Yeah. And it, it did it did better this time than it did the last time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. I didn't even know he was on the first song. Yeah, yeah. I know because he was at the very end. Most yeah, people already yeah. skipped it before they but before his verse, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy, man. Like um, you know, I feel like I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, one of the, like, honestly, one of the first people I knew doing music, right? Doing yeah. music, you know what I'm saying? Know. And then later on, obviously, after high school, a lot of people, you know, yeah. started doing it and stuff. But, you know, from the beginning, like, yeah, yeah I was, you was already on it. And like I said, you already kind of grew up with music around you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, you, you told me your grandfather was, uh, you know, he was a salsa, salsa band, so that's all right. And then your dad's a DJ. Mm -hmm. I actually got to go one one day to a club, and I think your dad was performing at Beach Home. Yeah, yeah. DJ on a Sunday, right? On a Sunday, yeah, because he's there every Sunday, yeah. And I was like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? It's cool, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. like, I always knew about your father, but I never got to meet him or anything. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. And it was kind of cool to be there and kind of like witness your father do his thing. He was killing it. Though, yeah, you know what I'm saying always does. And uh, you know, did he uh, did he help any type of way in your career? He does. Um, so one thing that my dad did teach me is um, when it comes down to like club bangers. Right, like me, like I kind of shied away from that because one thing I learned about music is like if you're trying to chase a hit, you're never gonna get a hit. As simple as that. In the beginning, I was trying to chase a hit. I wasn't really rapping about what I felt and how. Just you know, I wasn't really vibing with the music at the time. I was just like, all right, this sounds hard. It goes. It could go in the club. Boom, that was it. So my dad did teach me that, like when it comes down to like how to really make a club banger, like you know, flow switches, beat. Um, BPMs, you know, how fast the song is, all of that. He taught me that part. He also taught me a little bit of the business side when it came down to it. Um, not too much. I had to learn that. I learned that mostly on my end, um, like by myself. But he did teach me a little bit about that. So, yeah, he helped me a little bit. He also got me in front of some DJs. He did help me, like, network with people and everything. And um, because of him, I actually met the owner of Beecham. Still haven't performed there, but yeah, one day. hopefully, hopefully yeah. soon, yeah. So. Yeah, yes sir, yes sir. I remember hearing your dad on the radio too. Yeah, I didn't even say. I remember Friday nights or whatever it was. I remember mm -hmm. back in ninety five point three. Yep, ninety five point three. He was just on. Um, he just finished a contract with, with Roomba, and he he was on the radio with them, but he he's not on there no more. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, I remember that. DJ Tony stuff. Yeah, I remember that, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, shit. Even back in when we was out in grade school, man, I remember like. Uh, you used to put me on to the music and shit, though. Like, the heck it's on. Yeah, like yeah, that. bro. My dad used to I put me that, on. Man. Yeah. So that's put... crazy, man. That's, that's fire. Has your dad ever slid in one of your, like, one of your oh, tracks yeah. in a song? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he played it. Um, Anytime I pull up, uh, he plays one of my songs. Every time I pull up. But I don't really go... Uh, it doesn't really... It helps, but because his scene is more... Spanish. Spanish yeah, is, yeah. is not really right. helping as yeah, much. Yeah, but, but it helps a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah, people yeah. ask me. They're like, oh, I remember one day I was at Beecham. This was years ago, and he played one of my songs, and I'm down there, and someone was like, this shit hard, who this? And I was like, that's me. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah, and um, <clears throat> my very first, like, fan interaction happened at Beach, and when I was with my dad, um, I, I went down to get a drink. Some guy came up to me, he was like, yo, Tony, I see you perform at Soundbar once, man. Can you take a picture with me? I was like, oh, shit, yeah, and I took a picture with him and shit. That was my very first, like, fan interaction. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that shit was fine. That shit made me feel like, it motivated me. Yeah, so, yeah, it pushed me harder. So that's crazy. Well, I see, like you know, what I'm saying you taking this like a. We've had talk. Uh, me and Christian have talked about this on a, on a different podcast that you know it's uh, the game is like it's not a sprint, it's like a marathon. Yeah. And I see that you've been in in the long run. You know, what I'm saying? yeah. I see a lot of people they started and within like a year or two they quitting because you know yep. they never had any type of game plan, nothing. Yeah. yeah. And um, so. Oh my fault. My no, you good. No, you no, good. No, you no, keep no. Going. So. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about that. So the fact, um, how I look at it, right, 
people always say, oh, it's a one in a million chance of you blowing up, right? All right, well, all right. You got a million artists, right? About 70% of them are not going not gonna to continue. After they don't see the numbers hitting, they're not going to continue, right? All right, cool. About 10 to 15% of them, honestly, are just not good. So if you really think about it, out of that million, your, own, your real competition is 15%. Because, again, 70% is not going to continue. 15% is not that good. The other 15% is the ones that are really going to push. It's just you got to – everybody has its time. And there's always going to be an opportunity for those that top 15%. It just all depends on how you grasp it, if you can actually take advantage of it. So I'm not going to lie. I had a couple opportunities that I could, didn't take advantage of that I kind of messed up on, but I don't dwell on it too much. I'm like, man, I'm just going to keep working. We'll come back. And that's just something to think about it, though. I never really thought about it. Mm-hmm. Um so it's actually, you know, pretty insightful. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, we all had opportunities where, like, I feel like we could have taken advantage of them. We didn't. So, you know, I think yeah. that's part of being an artist, being yeah. somebody in the creative world. Um, yeah, you know, you just can't. You, you can't, can't sell yourself short. Either. Yeah, you can't sell yourself yeah. short, you know. Uh, you know, I know it's frustrating sometimes, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder what what if, what happened. Mm-hmm. But, you know, shit happens, bro. Yeah, my, my main thing with, like, frustration is that I stopped looking... All right, so at first, I would look at it like, oh, I'm trying to blow up, I'm trying to blow up. I stopped doing that, bro. Like, at this point, bro, I use, yeah, I want to make a career out of it, but I use music as, as therapy. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lie. Everybody goes through things, you know, you know what I mean? So music is my form of therapy, so I just let it out in that, and then I drop it. If I only get 50 views on it, so be it. I don't care. I like it. You feel me? I'm going to jam it like 100 times, <laughs> so yeah. I'm really going to get 150 views off of it, but, you know, but that's how I look at it. I stopped looking at it like, oh... I need to blow up now. I need to blow up now to, I'm going to just drop, be consistent. There's what I like to do. People are going to eventually gravitate towards it. So, yeah. Yeah. What would you say is like, um, I feel like you've been in the game long enough to know what to do or at least what works better than what doesn't. Is there any of those things you can kind of share with us like right now? Yeah. Where like anybody that's watching that's inspired, like inspired to be an artist or something. Is there something that you should be like, um, stay away from or like you should do? All right. So now everything is visual. Honestly, you know, the thing is about hip hop, our fan, the fan base for hip hop has a very like low attention span. So if you can't catch them with something visually appealing in the video or anything, it's not, it's not really going to go. You know what I mean? Now. That's another thing too. Now, right now, more than ever, short videos, you know, like 15 second videos, 20 second videos right now is at an all time high. You know what I mean? Like with me right now, I still like doing music videos. You know, I like doing them and everything. You know, I like to tell my whole story. But with me right now, I would low key just pay a videographer, right? However much they they charge for a whole music video and just shoot me a whole bunch of 15 second videos. Of the song to promote it you know what i mean tiktok is big especially tiktok right now like you could blow up like that out of nowhere so that's the main thing i would say focus more on your short content and like the catch people's attention things not to do um i'm gonna be honest like there's there's more than one way in, to do this i i don't think there's any wrong in this you know what i mean like you could blow up now it all depends how how long you want to be in this if you're looking to just get a quick bag you can do whatever you want you could, you know what I mean? But if you're looking to really grow in this and really be like up there, like on Drake level and everything, you got to just stay true to yourself. Because if you don't, say if one of the songs you blew up where you were just experimenting or you didn't, you know, it was like some, I don't know, like a rapper that's not really about that street life, but they make a street song, right? That blows up. Now everybody's going to expect you to keep doing that. That's your image for now on, right? So now say something happens in the future where your street cred takes a hit. All your fans are gone after that. All of that is fake love. If you stay true to yourself, then the fan base that comes with that is going to be genuine. That's why, like, I was a really big fan of X. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? X, he was doing it kind of wrong in the beginning because in the beginning it was a lot of negativity. He was yeah, fighting people. Yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, y'all, you, you guys seen the documentary? I haven't seen the documentary, no, but no. I, 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 I'm familiar enough with his career from yeah. at the beginning. Exactly. So it was a lot of beef. Then what happened is X, in the middle of his, like, right before, you know, all that stuff happened, he changed. Everything changed about him. He was more on the spiritual side. He was more, you know, like uplifting and everything. His fan base, the the fake fans left, but that's why his fan base is so like it's such a core fan base and they ride for him heavy because 
now they really seen the side of him that that's real. Yeah. And yeah, that's how I look at it now. That's why like now I just I'm just trying to stay true to myself. That's why I recently just changed my sound. I was on that trap fast paced stuff, and then recently I'm like, man, I don't I don't really want to do that anymore. So I changed yeah, it. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like that way too. You also create a sound that's almost timeless because that's mm-hmm. your sound. If you're trying to always like you know pursue what's what's hot right now, you mm-hmm. know drill rap, New York trap, you know all that type of sound, mm-hmm. you know uh, that comes and goes. You know what I'm saying? That's a fad, and you might kind of blow up, but by the time you like starting to make some noise, mm-hmm. that that wave is kind of gone already. Exactly. People don't want to realize it, but but gangster rap is starting to die. I'm gonna be honest, like it is starting to die. Like right now, people that are blowing up is like, look at the uh, who is it? Yeet. I don't really listen to Yeet like that, but that's not gangster rap. You know what I mean? Even like. Uzi is one of the biggest artists in the world. That's not gangster rap. If you're starting to really notice, bro, gangster rap's starting to die. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't. I, 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 well, it's like I can't even think of like a rapper right now that's like gangster. gangster yeah, like like that's new, that's coming up. Everybody, the, everybody that's on that gangster rap is already up. They already blew up, like Kodak, Young Boy, stuff like that. They're yeah, already up. So yeah. no matter what, their fan base is solidified. Yeah. You know, what I mean? right now you have um Boston Richie coming up, but Boston Richie is more like. It's just trap music, but he t- he's also like a lot of females like him because what he talks about, he talks about buying girl stuff and stuff yeah, like that's yeah, a lot yeah. of females like him. So it's kind of like in between, you feel me? So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, I mean, honestly, I can't. Because like, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. If you really think about it, other than the New York drill, other than New York drill, like yeah. New York drill is the only thing that I could really consider gangster rap that like is still hot, that's hot right now. That's really like going crazy, but that's pretty much it. But, but is it like really? I mean, like I'm familiar with obviously like rest in peace to like Pop Smoke, and mm-hmm. then um, what's the other one um, that was just as like almost as big as him? I mean, obviously bigger than him now, but uh, uh, shit, what's his name? Fabi. 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 Um, uh, you have Case Lock. Um, he's in jail now, but he he was doing like I think he would have did something like. You know, drill rap was really going crazy in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Brooklyn, New York was going crazy. K Flock was making it like putting lights on the Bronx, the yeah, Bronx yeah, drill. Yeah. Cause the Bronx drill is a little different than that Brooklyn drill. It's just the way it's like a more gritty sound in the yeah, Bronx yeah. than it is in Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn. Bronx, right? Yeah, yeah, feel me? So <laughs> K Flock was doing it, but unfortunately he went to jail and yeah. kind of messed up a lot of shit for him. But yeah. yeah. It's weird, man. I have this theory that like New York rappers can't shine, bro. Like, as soon as they get big, something happens always. Bro. It's their past, bro. Yeah. It's the past. Like, people think that they did something so far in the past, it can't c- catch up to them, bro. It can still catch up to you, bro. Yeah. And, like, another thing, too, that a lot of these rappers, a lot of these rappers are young, right? So, they think they're blowing up. Honestly, yeah, I feel you, but you don't want to change up on your friends, but some of those friends you shouldn't be around, bro. You feel me? Like, you guys have millions of dollars. Why are you guys still in the hood? Why are you guys going out, like, RIP P and B Rock, like the thing with P and B Rock, bro. You were in a in one of the worst parts of L A with yeah. no security, and you're you're a big artist, bro. Like you should not have been doing that. Yeah. Same thing with X. Mm-hmm. X is was one of the was at the moment probably top five biggest artists at the moment. Why are you out here buying stuff by yourself with nobody with you, with no security with you? You know what I mean? Like when you're at a certain spot. In your career, you gotta understand that you gotta leave all of that. Yeah, and you gotta be smart with your shit. You can't be posting up your addresses. Yeah, yeah, you know pop smoke. The thing yeah, with pop smoke and uh, everything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or you can't be shooting dice or whatever you was doing. You yeah, know? no, that's a fact. Exactly, like, yeah, bro, yeah. you're a millionaire. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying. Um, and it sucks, bro, because we lost a lot of good talent within, like, you know, within like four, like three, five four years. years yeah. You know what I'm saying. So it's crazy. Um, and we didn't even talk about Juice World, even though he, you know, he didn't get caught up or anything, but no, gotta leave all that shit behind, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, you know, I wasn't trying to get a little bit off topic. I want to stay talking about you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, no, you know you're good. You good. Um, so we talked about how, like, your dad influenced you a bit, mm-hmm. you know, and, and doing music and stuff like that. Um, when, when did you actually start actually des- uh, deciding to uh, start record, like, your music and start doing music? Um, I know it was around high school. But yeah, yeah. Um, freshman year, I had this boy named Mario. Um, he was in. He, I had a creative writing class with him, and <laughs> he would uh, he would just write raps and he would like perform it for me. Right, and I'm like, man, I want to try. So I wrote a rap and I performed it, and I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was dog shit. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you, it was bad, right? But he was like, no, it was actually straight. I'm like, okay. So I kept going, kept going, got better with it. Then he took me to the studio. Me and him did a song together. Uh, we dropped it. 
it did okay. I'm, I'm not, well, I'm actually not for my first song. It did pretty straight, cracked over a thousand views. It was okay for my first song. After that, it was over with, right? I brought Aries with me. We dropped the song together. He, he was sold on it and we kept going, kept going, kept going. And then we were in a group. Um, I don't know if you know Sleepy. Sleepy. You know GGM? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. He, was, uh, he was with them all the okay, time. Cool. So he was, a, he was my first engineer. And we were in a group together, you know, stuff happened. We had a falling out. And then um, me and Eris went on our own. We went through like five, 10 engineers because we couldn't find. We found mm-hmm. somebody, my boy Evan. We started recording with him. Then recently me and Sleepy and Eris clicked back up. So now we're kind of like, we're not in a group, but we're like collabing on a lot of stuff. Yeah, now. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's technically my whole journey, like, you know, in a quick way, you know, yeah. till right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, when you uh, you know you said like you met Eris and stuff like that was that like a big push uh, to keep making music Um, yeah so I met Eris at school uh, me and him were on the same bus I uh-huh. heard you I, I heard you guys before you keep on going I heard, I heard you guys didn't even like each other yeah bro Um, so it's not that I didn't, it's not that I didn't like him he ain't like me cause um, <laughs> there was this guy on the bus I kept throwing paper at the front of the bus and um I'm all the way in the back, and then the guy's like in front of me, and the guy start pointing at me, pointing at me, and I'm like, bro, it's not me, it's not like I'm telling him like, bro, it's not me, it's not me. He don't believe me. <laughs> so like three days go by, right? It's like the like the first week of school, he was in the front, and I was like, I just called him over. I'm like, bro, come here. He sat in the back of the bus, and it was over. After that, we we clicked, and then we became friends. That's fine. That's fine. It's funny because I mean, like, I mean, like I said, you know, we've been from grade school together, and I feel like. We was just that click, especially, uh, you know, especially in elementary school, but we just get in trouble all the time, bro. Bro, oh my God, <laughs> like, bro. Do we even miss the Dickinson's class on everything, bro? bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't even had that. Yeah, I'll bro. never forget that teacher, bro. He, he, do, I got in the most trouble with him, yeah. so. I don't know where you at, but you a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, facts, dick, bro. facts. And you molest little girls. I don't know. I'm oh, right. that, you know, uh, I don't know man. anything about that, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, man, it's crazy, bro. And uh, I see, you know, you linked up with Eris, and Eris is, you know, doing a great job. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I hope, you know, the best for him. Um, and I'm seeing you start to put out these visuals and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, is uh, you recently dropped? Um, the, is there a name to that that video? Uh, the, the open mic. Yeah, uh, Tony Better. Tony, Tony Better. Better. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that one was tough, bro. Like I now I'm talking it. about it. Yeah, that one was tough. It was like that's it's tough. Is that gonna be on your next project? Oh yeah, it's on the project. Um, I got I dropped two songs off the project. I got Reasons. I shot a video for that one. Then I got Tony Better. Uh, insight on Tony Better. Uh, I made it about somebody. I'm not gonna say no names, but I'll, I'll give y'all like the rundown of what happened. I was working and I guess some some chick was asking about me. I was new to the job. And bro, the guy that I wrote it about, he's an artist too. I guess he was next to her or whatever, right? Long story short, right, me and my ex, he's with my ex, right? Me and him were cool at one point, he's with my ex. He told the girl that I guess was asking about me that I beat women. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know why he said that. I don't know if he was trying to mess with her or whatever. I don't know what's going on, right? But that that like that threw me all the way off and like i was angry i'm not gonna lie, i was angry so I, I wrote that i wrote that song that same day i went to the studio that day and yeah i just recorded it that day and then i was like eris was with me he was like nah this is hard you got to drop this and i dropped the next <laughs> yeah that shit was tough man yeah i, I really like that one i was I watching it i'm telling you the emotions bro like that's yeah. what i be saying bro emotions you gotta let it out and, you know, and you know, I, I know several other artists and stuff that I'm like really cool with. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just, I don't, I don't rap. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I do, I do videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. But you know, I like, I get so much information. I like to learn off of you know people that've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just trying, and I try to like mentor the people that I know. Yeah. On ways to do things and what don't work. Uh, going back to what we was talking about about things to do and don't do. Yeah. Um. You know, you know, from the neighborhood we came from and mm-hmm. stuff like that, uh, rock is non-existent. Okay. Right. But when I got with my partner, mm-hmm. he showed me a whole new world. Yeah. Of like this is this is still an industry that's growing up, and yeah. I noticed that they're 
they do a lot of shows. Mm. Um, Rock shows is different. Yeah, and they really support each other. But I've seen you kind of post like, yo, like don't do these like shows. Like, yeah, is is there a reason why like you shouldn't really do these shows for hip hop unless you're um, like opening up for somebody or something? All right, so don't get me wrong. All right. When you're just starting off, open mics and showcases are ideal. You need to. You need to do it. That's how you're going to network with people. All right? I feel like when you hit a certain point, they don't do anything for you no more because you're performing in front of other artists. Honestly, nobody is going to pull up to a show. If they do pull up to a show, they're pulling up for their boy or their friend or the person they support. They're not pulling up to watch everybody else. So when it comes down to showcases with me, my problem with that is that a lot of these showcases charge artists to perform in front of other artists they're not consumers it's like it's like I'm trying to think like other way like it's like say like mcdonald's right say like there's like a fast food expo right they're trying to get new people to try their their sandwich right but the only people they're giving a the sandwich to is people that work at wendy's people like bro they're not gonna support you bro at the end of the day they're they have their own business now what they now what they are gonna do they're gonna try to use you Hey, yo, let's collab on something. Let's do this. Which is nothing wrong with it. At the end of the day, this game is a use, use game. It's all about value. If you bring value to me, right, and I bring value to you, we put it together, it's bigger. You know what I mean? We're, we're bigger in numbers. But showcases when you're at a certain point, like, there's no point because you're performing in front of other businesses, other brands. That's not really going to help you. They're not going to go home and jam you 90% of the time. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had some artists that jam my shit, but... 90% of the time, they're not going to jam So that's the, that's my problem with showcases. Okay. Uh, have you have you gotten the opportunity to open up for uh, for a bigger artist? Oh, yeah. I've opened up for a good amount of artists. Um, I don't know if you know Cap G. Mm-hmm. When Cap G made the Double XL Freshman Cypher, he did a tour. I opened up for him. Um, on Orlando, Legend, Caskey, opened up for him. That show was crazy. It was Caskey, Pooty. It was a, a lot of artists on that show. Um who else have I opened up? I opened up for Toothy. Um, that one was dope. I won a competition for that one. Um, at the time, Young Bands was blowing up. I opened up for him. He was going crazy. Now he, you know, he fell off. But um, who else? Uh, I feel like there's more that I just can't think of. But there, I, I've I've done a good amount of opening acts. That's crazy. That's crazy. Is there a way to get those those gigs? Like, is there like a competition? And then like. Some people do competition. So, all right, before COVID, there was Florida Grown. That was like the main promotion company. They were bringing in artists left and right, and they were putting together good shows. You feel me? Um, that's another thing, too, about showcase, just to go back real quick. You're going to perform, and there's 30 other artists performing. People eight years get you know tired, so that's another thing. But Florida Grown was putting shows together. Like They'll bring in the headliner and like five other, four other artists. That's, that's perfect. You know what I mean? That's four opening acts, then the headliner. That's perfect. You know what I mean? You don't want to get people's ears tired before the headliner. You know what I mean? Then people will start leaving. People are not, the energy is not going to be there. So the way that I was doing it, I just got cool with the owner of Soundbar at the time. And he would just hit me up for shows, 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 shows. And that's how I did it. There is a lot of competitions right now since after COVID, Florida Grown kind of died. So there's not really a big promotion company out here that's really pushing underground artists other than these people that just want money. Oh, you want to open up for this guy? Give me 500, give me a thousand dollars and you can open up. Like bro, this the baby show just passed, right? I hit them up to open up. They try to charge me a band. The baby, man. For the baby though? Like yeah. right now, like don't get me wrong. It's, I understand the baby's a mainstream artist, but where he's at his career right now, bro, like he's kind of on the, on the pit, like on the downfall. Then he like, not like, then he like try to give away tickets and nobody got it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. saying. Yeah. So it's like, Bro, no, I'm not going to pay for that. So back then, Florida Grown was really doing genuinely. They weren't charging people. They're like, I want to put together yeah, the were. best show that I can put together. Yeah, nah, love, right. You know what I mean? So right now in the city, is a void. That's why I'm trying to kind of change that. Me and Eric's been throwing events, our own events. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to try to, I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to get to the point to where I can bring in headliners, where I can bring in people and just mm-hmm. do shows like, you know, five artists on the show. Come in, you know what I mean? All right, I like your music. You know what I mean? You, I think you sound good with this art, opening up for this artist, stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that's where I'm trying to get to that point. I'm trying to build a community. It's different. You know what I mean? Community is what's going to blow this up. That's yeah. how that's how Atlanta's so big. They got a really good community, like music community. All the yeah. Atlanta rappers chill with each other. 
Yeah, if you yeah. really think about it, that's community right there. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm trying to build. Yeah, and I feel you that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's something that, you know, you know, us as a company, you know, here in San Tuku, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we trying to, you know, help and give back, you know what I'm saying? Because like, uh, we got the talent here, bro. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, though, I don't know what's going on that we just can't level up to that next level. But it's like the talent's here, bro. Yeah. And there's people that have been doing it. And we see it. I mean, mm-hmm. you've been in the game for a long time. And the amount of time that I've been here, you know, studying artists and stuff like that, I can see the talent. There's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You and Eris being one, you know what I'm saying, that that, that I've been enjoying music lately from, you know, because I used to never listen to local artists. You yeah. know what I'm saying? For me, that was like, you know, but then like, I'm like, wait, hold up. There's some good music out yeah. here. You know yeah, what I'm saying? No, like, that's a fact. Yeah. Everybody listens. Like, this is almost, you know, like you want them, you know, you want them rare ass J's. You know, yeah, what I'm no, saying yeah. for me, like when you listen to artists like that, this is like, yo, this is like a pearl and a diamond. Like you mm-hmm. could really say you was listening to this person before they blew up. Yeah. So you know, you know, I'm starting like to like really. What it is is the it's just the oversaturation of, of rappers, bro. It's not even just artists, bro. It's because I promise you, if I was doing a different genre, shit probably would took off already. But it's just rappers, bro. Everybody want to be rappers. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mm-hmm. And what it is is that studios are so easy to come by, and these people are charging damn near nothing to get in the studio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like now people think, all right, I sell a little weed here and there. Let me go ahead and use this extra money to go to the studio and record a song. Oh, cool. It's, it, it sounds good. I'm going to do another one. Then those are the people that fall off eventually. It always it happens. That's what I'm saying. You have to have a passion for this. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know what they're getting this, themselves into. That's another yeah. thing, too, because this is a different game, bro. Yeah, yeah. People are ready to eat you alive, bro. I see a lot of people. I see a lot of artists that, um, I see a lot of artists that, they want this to be their career. They want this to be their future, but they're not willing to invest in it. Like if they were going to school for it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. People, you know, and I've talked about this before. People spend, uh, you know, thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in schooling mm-hmm. for their for their career. But then somebody that wants to make music their career, they only want to spend a few hundred bucks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? How would you say like, uh, how much would have you invested in your career so far? Huh, man. I'm not even gonna lie. With um, me and Eric talked about this once, right? Where like, if we would have known what we were getting ourselves into, we probably would have never tried to pursue music as a career. But we invested so much into this that we have to at this point. You know what I mean? Just keep pushing. I don't know how much I invested, but if we're talking about studio time, because I'm a type of person, I'm in the studio a lot. Like the thing that I do, I get a lot of songs. I write like 20 to 30 songs, and then I go to the studio. So I'll take like a three month break from the studio. But when I get them 20, 30 songs, I'm in the studio, like, every week. Like, I'm in there, you know, at least recorded three songs. So that right there, my engineer gives me love, but that right there, you know, if we're not talking about, like, you know, me getting love, for three songs, I'm probably, you'll probably pay, like, $300, $400, maybe a little bit more just to record and mix and master three songs, right? All right, cool. Now we're going into music videos. On the lower side of music videos, the lowest for a good music video, you'll probably spend like four or five hundred. So that's the lower side. You know what I mean? That's just like a quick run and gun music video, no concept, mm-hmm. just run and gun, you know? All right. For if you want to really put make the video really good, you're gonna be spending at least a thousand. Yeah, that's me well enough, cause you know, uh, you know, we shot uh, we worked with all sorts of, you know, like mm-hmm. we were in film school and stuff, me and Christian. Mm-hmm. You know, we was working on videos, like actual music videos, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars. You see, videos. and you, you see yeah. what I mean? That's what I'm saying. A thousand dollars is like for you to really put something yeah. together, like you can do it on a thousand dollars on a budget, but yeah, yeah. For you to really put something great together, yeah. yeah. That next level, like mm-hmm. next level shit. Yeah, you're talking about up there. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like so we're going off of, all right, so if I'm if I'm talking about songs, music videos, uh what else? Beats. You got to pay for beats, you know what I mean? You have to. Yeah, like, you have you're to. not going to be able to drop it. You're not going to be able to drop it on DSPs. And you know, you can drop it on SoundCloud, but don't know when you use SoundCloud like that no more. You feel me? Yeah. All right, so you got to pay for the beats. Beats can go anywhere for as low as $25 for a lease to $500 for exclusive. All right. What else you got to worry about? Then you got to worry about cover art. Cover art is a whole different game, mm-hmm. right? Um, what else? I imagine promotion, self promotion. Oh, self promotion. You know what I mean? If you're going to pay for promotion, <clears throat> me, I pay for like blogs and stuff like that. But like when it comes down to like actual Instagram promotion, that don't really work. Like, unless you're putting in bands. If you're putting in bands, then it's going to go crazy. But a couple hundred dollars not really going to do anything. You know what I mean? You got to put in like two, three thousand dollars in there for it to really make a dent. 
You know what I mean? But um, yeah, all together. So for one single, I'm just going to break it down to one single, right? If you're going to do a really good music video, right? Like a really good music video, you're probably spending like 1500 I'll just say 1500 mm -hmm. for the lowest, for a local artist. 1000 to 1500 Song recording, mixing, and mastery, you'll probably be paying 150 to 200 for that. Um, cover art is going to be anywhere between $25 to $100. Um, just right there, that's almost $2,000 just for one song. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Just off of those three things. That's not even counting promotion. That's not counting rollout. DJs, if you're going to let DJ play it, uh, stuff like that. That's not counting none of that. So that's almost $2,000 just on those three things, just creating the song and the yeah. release. Yeah. So all, everything after that is more. So it's a lot. You you have to invest in this. It's a business. Yeah. Simple as that. At the end of the day, it's a business. It's a you, career, bro. It's a business. You got to... You gotta be you gotta be able to invest in yourself if you want you know mm -hmm. it to happen. Exactly, you know exactly. Like, and shit I, ain't gonna happen overnight for free. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And what I don't understand with people, they invest in all of these other brands. Like you know, people out here investing in all these other brands, but you're investing your time into a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. So why can't you just take a couple dollars, put it to the side for a little savings just for your music? Like okay, I'm gonna save this much money for so I could drop these next five songs. I don't understand that. I never understood that. That's why I'm like, man, I work for my money. This is my money. Yeah, I pay. I make sure I'm, my bills is paid, but I always make sure I have something for yeah. for music. That's fair, man. Yeah. Well, bro, I'd like to thank you, man. Shit, mm -hmm. been fire. I feel like we've been talking about some fire shit. Yeah, we have. Uh, <laughs> um, if you want to let them know when the your project coming out? Yeah, again? yeah. Um, um, I'm dropping at it January 1st. If this is out after that, you know what I mean? Then it's already out. You know, go check it out. Um, yeah. I have music videos coming for it. I'm trying to drop a music video for every song on that album. So, you know, I'm working. I'm trying to work this whole year. Then I got a collab album with this other artist named Miller. Um, I'm working on a lot of collabs with a lot of different artists. It's a lot of stuff going on this next year, so. That's what's up. Any upcoming shows or anything like that? Um, as of right now, no, but I am working on um, another event. I'm working on a show, a big event for a show. Um, and then I'll probably end up doing, we'll probably end up doing another Toys for Tots um, basketball game, like a local artist basketball game. Probably hit up a lot of local artists, like 20 of them. Get like a whole full court basketball game in a rec center and like do another like donation thing. I don't know yet, but I'm gonna figure it out. All right, that's cool. So yeah, guys, if you want to check out Tony's music, uh, link will be down below. And uh, yeah, man, thank you, bro. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Appreciate you, appreciate thank you. Thank you, and uh, yeah, man, catch y'all later.